What's going on, everyone? Today, we got a new guide on the Moonshiners role in Red Dead Online in 2023. During this current event month right now, Rockstar does actually have a bonus of double money on Moonshiner sales. But regardless, if you're watching this video after the events has happened, this guide is going to be extremely useful on how to get started with the Moonshine role, as well as how to get into it. So you know how to make the most amount of money. And even without this bonus, you're still making a really good amount of money from these Moonshiner sales. So today's video is going to be breaking down pretty much everything you need to know about the Moonshiner role. And if you guys do enjoy this or find this helpful, make sure to drop a like and also subscribe and put on post notifications. So to get started with the Moonshiners role, there's actually two ways. So first, you can either own the trader role and be rank five, and then you can end up purchasing it from there, or you could just kind of bypass it by just paying five gold bars to unlock it immediately. Obviously, it's up to you. If you have the trader role, I would say probably just end up grinding that a little bit more, just doing resupply missions as well as some missions, get to rank five. Honestly, you should probably take less than an hour to do that anyways. And then after that, you could just end up buying the Moonshiner role. But if you don't feel like waiting or you don't have enough gold for the trader role, then you always have the option to just um, end up using five gold bars to bypass that and get into the Moonshiner role from there. Of course, it's going to end up costing a little bit more, though, since you did have to invest that five gold bars to bypass that way. So if you do prefer that option, you have to go to progress in the menu and we're going to the Moonshiner role and then just end up clicking the option that does that you choose to use five gold bars to bypass this. But either way, once you reach rank five or use the five gold bars, there's going to be a new marker on your map that tells you to head over to Emerald Ranch. From there, you just get a nice little cutscene, pretty much introducing you a little bit to how the Moonshine Shack works and how, like, you know, the Moonshine story kind of starts a little bit as well, which we'll get into a little bit later. But overall, to get, you know, into the Moonshine role itself, of course, you're going to have to buy, and that's actually a total of 15 gold bars at this month. The original price, though, is 25 gold bars, so it's not really cheap, but overall, there's a lot of ways to make gold. If you guys want to check out a video I made, I will leave a link in the description. But really, to simplify it, to make gold, especially when you just started, if you don't have any rolls, the best way to do it is stranger missions or, of course, the blood money missions as well. Those are probably two of the best ways to make gold really fast. Of course, there's other ways as well, such as doing like call to arms or if you just want to do some of the challenges or even daily challenges too, you can earn you gold pretty fast. And to earn 25 gold bars, I mean, consistently, you know, if you're grinding a lot, you know, playing throughout the week, you could probably make that and maybe about like less than a week, maybe just like five days. But it depends. Obviously, if you want to, you can just buy gold bars, but I really would highly recommend not doing that. Um, but of course, it is up to you. The option is there. Now, of course, when you are buying the shack, you will see that there is five different locations that you can end up putting your shack. So that is the Bawinua, the Grizzlies, Hennigan Stead, Heartlands, and Tall Trees. Now, you might think that, you know, these locations don't really matter, but they actually do play a big factor, especially when it comes to Moonshine sales. So one of the problems with Tall Trees is the fact that there's actually going to be some issues there because there's a lot of hills, which could affect your Moonshine sale. And then the Heartlands is a pretty good location. However, for most of the sales, you do have to cross some railroad tracks, but we'll talk more about later why that could affect your sale. Hennigan's stead is all right, but it's not really many places that are around it. And then when it comes to the Grizzlies, one of the biggest problems is again, kind of just like with the roads and stuff like that. There's hills, there's rocky stuff that can, you know, mess up your sales. So really overall, the best place to have it would be the Bayou Nua or the Heartlands. These are two of the best places to have it because, you know, overall, yes, the, you know, railroad tracks do affect your sale. But if you are just patient, you just take your time with it. It shouldn't be that bad. But I think Bayou Nua is probably the best one because most of the time, um, you're not going to have to deal with many players. So there's no issues there. There's no railroad tracks that you have to cross. There's not any hills and stuff like that. It's really overall just flat land. You're close to St. Denis. You're also close to, um, you know, roads as well. And then another thing is that there is a fast travel post that is, uh, you know, near Bowden Wild, which is the one that's, you know, in the swamp place. And really overall, the only problem I would probably have with Bowden Wild is just there is, you know, some alligators, which, you know, probably could attack you. But I mean, it's really rare for that to happen because the shack is even really near that. So I think that's probably the best location. But again, Heartlands is another option. Tall Trees is decent as well. Um, you know, the hills, you know, they're kind of there, but they're not, you know, the worst. So those are three of the best locations. It's really up to you. But I would highly recommend staying away from the Grizzlies as well as Hennigan Stead. Now, just know that you do end up having the choice to change locations in the future. So this isn't like a one time thing. You just have to go to the interaction menu and then, you know, to your businesses section and then you can change the location. Of course, you do have to pay a fee that is on discount this month, but usually it is around like two hundred dollars to move it. All right, so let's get into the roles itself. So overall, there is some pretty good stuff that you can unlock. I think the main things that everybody is going to focus on for sure 
is the upgrades for your bar as well as you know for the business itself these are going to you know obviously improve the business to make it look nicer as well as obviously give you more money too so looking at the past you have the bar expansion that is going to be at rank five and the price of that is going to be 950 dollars but overall i would say not to focus on that at all for right now and then at rank 10 you have the condenser upgrade which is 825 dollars and then you have the polished copper upgrade at 875 dollars at rank 12. Now you have to actually get the first one before you actually get this one. So you have to get the condensed upgrade before you get the polished one. You can't just skip on over to it. I don't know why Rockstar made it like that, but that is the order that you kind of have to go in. And then besides that, the best thing to unlock from this role would also be the Norfolk Roaster, which is the, you know, one of the fastest horse for sure in Red Dead Online. There's also some other small things as well, but let's focus mainly on the business right now. So once you end up getting the Moonshiner business, the first thing to do for sure is to complete the Moonshiner story. So we obviously have the original Land of Opportunity missions, which is the Red Dead Online story, but the Moonshiner business is actually one of the only businesses that have its own separate story. And this is going to be a life of shine. So these are just about five missions that kind of break down a little bit on the story and background of like the Moonshine stuff, but they actually are really fun. They're good, they pay pretty well, and they can actually benefit your Moonshine business too. These missions can be done standard, hard, or ruthless, and of course, ruthless does pay the most. And if you have a friend, I recommend doing it because it makes more fun as well as more easier. But of course, these can be done solo as well. So after you are done completing the Life of Shine missions, this is when you should be really getting started with the Moon Shine Shack, upgrades, sub missions, and more. So start off by heading over to Maggie, and this is where you're going to be seeing the Moon Shiner store. This will give you options that you can actually upgrade or change up your Moonshine Shack a little bit. So you have items, you have expansions, the bar decor, business upgrades, and photos. The main things for sure here are going to be expansions and also business upgrades. So for items, if you want to, you can get the Toxic Moonshine pamphlet as well as Flaming Book Moonshine. This is actually um, a type of like alcohol that if you actually pour it on the ground, you can light it and it'll blow up. And a Toxic Moonshine, of course, is going to be, you know, a type of Moonshine that you can have, which can actually end up killing. Um, and then after that, when you head down a little bit more, you have the expansions, which is going to be the bar expansion and the band expansion, which we'll talk more about later. After that, you have the next option, which is actually going to be the bar decor. This is where you can change, like, you know, the style and stuff like that when it comes to the bar. Overall, not really important, but again, if you want to, you can do that. And then you have the equipment upgrades, which is the condenser and the polished copper upgrade that I talked about before. This is the main part, I would say, of the Moonshine Shack. This is where you're going to be increasing your money because at first, right now, you don't have any upgrades, so you're not going to be making that much money with sales. But this is where you're going to have to focus on upgrading these parts and you'll be able to make a lot more money from the Moonshine Shack itself. And then lastly, you have the um, business, you know, kind of bar photos and stuff like that, where you can change, you know, photos around the bar. Again, not really important, it's just really cosmetic wise. Some of them you actually have to have like, you know, previous outlaw passes to unlock, but others you could just end up getting here. Others you unlock somewhere else. So overall, pretty cool, but not really important. The main things again are going to be the business upgrades and then also the little, you know, equipment changes, stuff like that. So to really get started with the business though, head down to Marcel, which is located in the basement parts of the Moonshine Shack. And from there, you pretty much get a little bit of an introduction on how things are going to work. So this menu is going to come up and there's going to be three options, which is weak moonshine, average moonshine, and a strong moonshine. If you're a beginner, of course, this is going to mainly only be on the weak moonshine. And then in order to get the average moonshine, you have to purchase the um, condenser upgrade. And to get the strong one, you have to get the polished copper upgrade. And of course, it does take more time to produce, but it's going to be better moonshine and better moonshine means more money. So for weak moonshine, you're going to get around like 50 to like 75 ish dollars a little bit. For average, you get around like in the 100 range. And then for the strong moonshine is where you start to get in the high hundreds as well as 200s, possibly with 300 as well. Now, to even get started with this, you're going to see that there is a mash price, which you're going to have to actually pay to start the production. Now, the usual price is $50 for this month. As you guys can see the gameplay, it is $29. That's because of a discount. But regardless of a discount, there's actually a way to always get the mash price lowered. So to do that, you actually have to complete a bootlegger mission or you end up completing the Moonshiner missions. If you guys want to do a bootlegger mission, um, you just head over to Maggie upstairs and you'll be able to just start it from there. It's going to prompt you. And really, when it comes to these bootlegger missions, what you're doing is one or two things. Either you're going to um, actually um, go to like a roadblock and I'm killing a bunch of enemies and then that's really it. Or you end up going to like a moonshine camp and you, you know, kind of damage or end up, you know, poisoning their moonshine. And that's another, you know, event that can happen. And from there, once you end up doing that, it actually lowers the match price by about $20. Um, and of course, you can also even find these bullet missions in free roam just by riding around. If you see it, definitely go ahead. It's going to pop up as like a red circle on your map. 
And like I said earlier, you can also just do a moonshine story mission, which is probably going to take a little bit longer, but that's also another way to, you know, reduce your moonshine um, mash price. So overall, I would say whenever you're about to do a moonshine sale, if you want to make the most amount of profit, the best way to do it for sure is to make sure that you end up getting the mash price discounted a little bit for you. So as a new player, you most likely will only have the weak option available and you're really just going to have to keep grinding the moonshine roll as well as other roles like trader or even just other missions as well to make enough money for you can upgrade and get more moonshine. What I used to do in the beginning is pretty much I would just start up, you know, the weak moonshine, make sure I do, you know, the match price discount first and just keep selling it every 24 minutes until I made enough money. You know, while I'm waiting for that to produce, I would do like stranger missions, even like, you know, bounty hunter missions as well. Just make a money because the thing is, you just want to make enough money for you can end up getting the average moonshine. And then after that, make more money from the average moonshine for you can end up buying the strong moonshine. So it's just really just a, a full on grind to make more money from the moonshine rule. But either way, it's still a decent way to make money in red line, even without the strong upgrade. Now, once you end up picking which one you're going to do, you obviously have to flavor the moonshine as well. And there's going to be a bunch of different flavors that you could choose from. So there's going to be the today's request. And then there's also all recipes. So there's different recipes you could pick from really to keep it nice and simple. The best recipe to pick is the berry cobbler. It's really the one that has like the most amount of available easy ingredients to get because each of the different moonshine actually has different ingredients. And some of them are harder to get than others. You might look at the Agarita, you know, Sunrise Moonshine and think, well, that pays more than the other one. Well, that is true. However, some of the things that you have to get is actually a bit more harder. Some things you have to buy, other things you have to find around in the world. So the thing with Berry Cobbler, why I say it's the best is that even though it pays a little bit less compared to some of the other ones, overall, it's really easy to find most of the stuff in the world, such as like you would just get canned peaches from like the store. You could buy raspberries as well, peaches too, or you could just find them in the world or at stores. So it's just really easy to get it. Of course, it's definitely is up to you which one you want to pick. You can choose, you know, the more expensive one like, you know, Agarita. Um, but again, to get certain things, it's just going to take a lot of time. And, you know, profit wise, it might be a lot more money. But really, when it comes to just, you know, getting this stuff out the way, just selling the moonshine, making them out the money that you need. I think the best way to do it for sure is Berry Cobbler. So that's the one I say to always go for, it, even though it pays a little bit less. And again, this month, it is a bonus on it. So it is $453. However, usually it's around like $250 ish dollars when it comes to selling it. And once you pick a recipe, of course, you're going to have to wait for it to be produced. And once it is done, you'll get a notification in game and it'll tell you that's that, you know, it's completed and you can end up, you know, selling it. So to sell your moonshine, you have to head back to your moonshine shack and there you will see all the different options that you have. So these are the list of buyers that you guys can choose from. Some buyers do end up taking all the flavors. Other buyers only take certain flavors. So, for example, for Burt Higgins, he actually takes all flavors, but he pays a lot less compared to everybody else. So this is the person that you should never go for when it comes to selling your moonshine. However, if you pick somebody, for example, like more Carol, he's going to be paying four hundred fifty three dollars. Um, and then he obviously does also pay the higher price. Now, if a buyer doesn't set your type of moonshine or you just don't want to go with that buyer, you just have to wait the timer, which is going to be at the bottom. You see as in this gameplay it's one hour, 34 minutes. But really, overall, there always should be a buyer available. And for the type of moonshine you have, always go for the highest one that, you know, the buyer that pays, you know, the most amount of money. And then and once you do select that one, you'll be able to get started with the moonshine delivery. Moonshine deliveries are overall really simple and quick. They usually take maybe around like two to five minutes. Um, and again, you could do this solo or with friends. Really, the main thing to focus on is just not to go too fast. It don't hit, don't hit rocks, don't hit, you know, railroad tracks. Don't crash into things because if you crash, you're going to end up losing a bottle of moonshine or even a few bottles of moonshine. And just by losing one could cut your profits down by a lot. For example, you know, when I first started doing the moonshine roll, I remember, you know, I had to sell for like $200. You lose one bottle, it's already down to like almost $170. And that's like $30 that you already lost right there. So try your best to just not, you know, crash into things. And you can actually just use autopilot just by aiming your gun anywhere. And it's actually going to automatically do it for you. Or you can go to cinematic mode if you want to. But honestly, I'd recommend just, you know, aiming your gun. It's more easier, more simple. And usually the horses don't crash into anything. But that's why I was saying earlier with the moonshine shack locations, if you pick a place that has a lot of rocks, like the grid these you're probably going to end up hitting something and you're just going to end up losing money so it's really a money standpoint and just always make sure to pay attention to roll don't crash into things because that's just obviously going to affect your type of money and the amount of money that you get from your sale now throughout your moonshine sales you're going to see that there's going to be some road stops and sometimes if you just see you know these enemies there's going to be like a bunch of like lanterns around these enemies are going to sometimes stop you and check your moonshine sometimes they check you and they let you go other times when you approach it, they're just going to, you know, just let you go without even having to stop. But then you have the annoying times where they actually stop you and then they end up seeing that there is moonshine and they're going to start shooting at you. 
really overall they're not that bad of missions i mean as soon as they start shooting you should just keep driving they're going to spawn some horses you know with some enemies on them you know behind you but you just you know keep going shoot them if you got to sometimes they don't really affect you to be honest um but just know that this happen happens sometimes throughout your moonshine shells but i would say probably like 50 to 60 percent of the time we're just gonna be able to go through without having to deal with anything um and this is also again in the body noir moonshine shack location so i'm just going straight to saint denis defense simple delivery overall really easy this is why you know do consider the body noir to be one of the best locations to drop off um you know your moonshine and of course once you deliver you end up getting your money and then you also get some gold as well if you complete any challenges and you know usually you end up doing some and then you also get xp as well so overall pretty simple you know easy business most of it is just passive once you end up you know starting the production you can do whatever you want in red dead online you can do bounty missions stranger missions and then by the time it's ready go ahead and sell it and it's just easy money from right there and if you end up doing it with a friend or a couple of friends a posse they end up getting um, some money from it as well i think it's around like 50 percent of the uh, money so it's actually pretty nice to actually help our friends in red dead online and if it upgrades again i recommend just keep grinding the moonshine and rolls whether other things in the game to end up getting the polished you know copper upgrade for you can make more money from your sales um, but then for the bar and band upgrade, the bar upgrade is going to, you know, give you the opportunity to have some posses as well as like, you know, friends and players just come to your moonshine shack and you can have fun. Um, really overall, it's not really going to make you that much money, but it is something cool to have in Red Dead Online. It also gets decorated in the uh, winter time for Christmas. So it's actually kind of cool. And then you also have the band upgrade, which gives you the opportunity to play with a band. Again, not really going to make you any money at all, but it's just something fun that you can do. So I'm probably focusing on getting those two things last. Um, you know, once you end up getting the upgrade, so focus on making money first and then have fun after is the, the main thing to, you know, get out of the moonshine role when it comes to Reddit online. And then going back to the moonshine ranks itself, again, I said that there was going to be some small things that you guys can unlock, which can overall be kind of useful. Um, so over at rank two, you have the Barry Coffee moonshine. So you actually have to unlock this, but you're probably going to unlock it anyways throughout playing the story mission. So something that should, you, you should get like pretty much pretty first in the, you know, role itself. And then you have this toxic moonshine pamphlet which is kind of a way that kind of shows you how to make toxic moonshine which is kind of like a molotov a little bit you have bootlegger opportunities which is going to be at rank four rank six has the band expansion which again isn't really going to be useful at first so just focus on getting that a little bit later you have the ingredients satchel upgrade which is going to be obviously a way that you can hold more ingredients in your pouch that is going to be at rank seven um new buyer orders as well is going to be at rank nine rank 15 reduces the time you know that it takes to make you know moonshine which is going to be called the master distiller and then for the last page we have the material satchel upgrade which is going to be at rank 17 and then lastly rank 19 greatly reduces the risk of attacks now throughout the road you do unlock you know more recipes as well as more buyers but like i said earlier Barry Cobbler, as well as the person that pays the most, is definitely the way to go pretty much every single time. And just know when it comes to these bonuses, Roxy usually does at least, you know, some type of moose trying bonus, usually maybe like two to three times per year. So when it does happen, definitely check it out and read that online. But as a full breakdown and guide of the Moonshiner role in Red Dead Online, again, this is one of the best roles in the game. And this is something that I think a lot of players should definitely check out, especially if you're beginning as well. And it's a role that I think everyone should own. It's really great when it comes to passive income. And it's something that you could do solo and make a lot of money from as well. If you guys have any questions or even some tips, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And if you guys did enjoy this or found this helpful, again, drop a like, subscribe, Put up post notifications for you guys never miss an upload and i'll see y'all in the next one peace